Hi everybody, a great way to get really good at HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is to practice by building small applications. And sometimes some of those applications don't have to be the boring run-of-the-mill enter data, get something back kind. They could even be interesting games. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build the guess the number game, which has a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript, just the right balance of all three to help you tie together various concepts into something that is completely working nicely. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So before we go too far, let's take a look at what guess the number game actually even looks like. And so what you see is a, the title guess number and a text field where you can enter any kind of numbers you want and a button that says guess. And the idea is for us to type in a number and see where we fall relative to the actual number that has been guessed by our computer at this time. So let me type in 10. And when I type in 10 and press enter, I get a notification. It says your guess of 10 is too low, which means the number I should be guessing is a little bit on the higher end. Let me try 50. Okay, so a number of 50 is considered too high. So the actual number I need to guess is somewhere between 10 and 50. So let's go ahead and do 30. 30 is also too high. Let's type 20. 20 is too low. Now I've narrowed down my guess to be somewhere between 20 and 30. Let's type 25. And as it turns out, 25 is the correct guess. So I type in 25, the answer is correct. And I can now see a message that tells me that this is the correct answer. And I can scroll through some of the other values as well. And then the, con the game continues you know, anew. So now I have, I'm guessing 40 is too low. Let's type in 100. Of course, 100 is gonna to be too high. 80 is too high. 60 is too high. 50 is too high, no, 50 is too low. And so, which means that my guess is somewhere like 54, which is too high, 53 is too high. So now it's 52, 52 is correct. And you can now see how the game progresses. We keep guessing, once we guess the correct answer, our computer has a new number ready for us to guess. And this game goes on pretty much forever. And so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and build this application by using writing some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let me go back to our slides. There are two ways you can go about building this game or building our application. So one approach is by, let me maximize my screen here. What there, one approach is by following this video, reading the article, the code I'm gonna be providing on screen and then going from there. There are two ways you can go about building the game. One approach is by going to crew.com, searching for guess the number, and landing on a page that will look something like this, where you can say, play with the game, see everything in your browser, copy and paste code, and, and play along from there. Or of course, you can follow along in the video and have a more interactive kind of an approach where I'll be talking through the code, I'll be adding and discussing things. Whatever your approach, there's no right or wrong here. If you prefer reading and copying as opposed to watching and listening and typing, then you have an approach that works for you available right there. And so with that, let's go and go to our code editor and go and start building our application. And so what I have here is VS Code. And in VS Code, you can see that I have a blank page. It's called guest number at HTM. I had the same exact page open in my browser on the right-hand side. So nothing too dramatic here in terms of what we're starting off with. So let me go and use the shortcut exclamation mark to get a very basic starting point for a page. So I'm gonna call this guest the number and I'm gonna refresh the page. And now you can see that guess the number is showing up on screen. So at least we know that the page I'm editing and the page I'm showing up on screen are exactly the same one. So now there are several approaches we could take for actually building our application. One approach is by starting with the UI, building the look and feel of our app, and then progressing down towards the logic. In this case, I'm gonna go with the other approach instead. I'm gonna start bottoms up, start with the logic of our application, and then from there build the UI going all the way around it. There's no right or wrong way, use whichever approach you like, but I'm gonna be following this approach here. So let's go ahead and type in our script tag. And what I wanna first do, is just get the basic logic of our application going, where if the number I guessed is too small, I present the message telling the user, the player, that the number is too small, the number I guessed is too large. Similarly, I, prevent, I, I provide a value that tells you that the guess was too large. So let me just hard code some values. Let's say the number to guess is a variable. I'm gonna have it value to 10, which means it's the number to guess as the final answer. I let enter number 
equals 15. So instead of having any UI or any custom logic for specifying the number to guess, I'm going to hard code it for now because my goal is to build the app up incrementally. And this is not the most interesting thing I want to focus on. Let's start with function check number. And this function doesn't take any arguments. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do if entered number equals equals number to guess. In this case, I guess the correct answer. I'm going to console.log a message that says you win, which makes a lot of sense there. Great. I'm going to return the statement out because there's no point in any of the code in this function running. Now, if entered number is less than number to guess, I'm going to go ahead and print out in the console the value that says your guess is too low. Logically, that seems to make sense. And likewise, if entered number is greater than number to guess, well, in this case, the message is going to be opposite. I'm just copy this line here and just replace your guesses too low with your guesses too high. All right. And of course, let's go and call check number, not canvas gradient check number. All right. And so if we run this code, you can kind of imagine that enter number is 15, the value to guess is 10. And so the number I provided is larger, which means that this is the value that'll get printed out on screen. Now go bring up the console. Let me make this much, much larger so you can see exactly what's going on and refresh this page. You can now see the message, your guess is too high, being displayed on screen, which is exactly what we expected given our input is 15 and the number to actually guess is 10. So not too shabby there. And so the next thing we're going to do is go one level deeper. Let's figure out a way to have messages that are not quite as plain as what we see before, but actually are more along the lines of what we saw as part of our game, where we can see the messages printed on screen. And so for this, I'm going to add some HTML elements. So we have our body element. Inside, I'm going to add div class equals main. Just have a parent container in some ways. And inside it, PID equals results. And this P tag will be the destination that any message you want to print will go on. So instead of it being a console log like it is right now, we'll want it to be somewhere displayed on screen. And so now I'm going to change our messaging a bit. So first, let me get a reference to the P element that will be hosting our messages. Let results equals document.query selector and hashtag results. All right. So we now have a reference to in our JavaScript to the DOM element, which is stored by the ID value of results. And so the next step here is to go ahead and replace some of these values with, uh, with the actual item to print out. So I'm going to let message is a variable. And I'm going to set it to using the handy tilde sign p123. Let me simplify that first. p new game time dash 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 close p. Let me actually make sure the number of dashes matches up with the number of dashes I need. So I'm going to go and copy this, apply it to here and here. And I'm not done printing all this out. So it's new game time. And then the next value I want to print is slash p. And it's going to be your guess of. And let's put entered number here. Is correct. Number is b correct slash b. Close it. Exclamation mark slash p. And then we're almost in the next line. The so third line, it's going to be slash P. Then let's close this fully out. Slash P. And of course, this also happened to catch a bug here where I do want this to be a closing tag of P instead. And let's get this tilde character in there. Okay, I'm going to remove console.log. And similarly, I want to do something similar for the other locations as well. But let's just first finish up what is the entered value equals number to guess. So let's do results dot insert adjacent HTML. This is another method I'm going to be using for making this all work. Is I'm going to use results dot insert adjacent HTML, specify the value of after begin. And this is one of those things where I could have just used inner HTML. But what I want to do is actually 
insert my HTML before other HTML elements. And that means that inner HTML, what is appended it towards the end, in this case, I get more precise uh, control over where exactly in my list of HTML elements to provide this, in which case it's going to be immediately after the parent element, which is results, which is gonna be the top of the document. And so I'm gonna put after message equals message, and I'm good to go. So before I go too far into this, you know, if I refresh the page, I think it's gonna happen right now because our guess is too high. I'm gonna set the entered number value to 10. And this means that this particular code path will kick. And so once I do that, your guess of 10 is correct, is showing up on screen. Now, this is not styled appropriately or anything like that, but that's okay. I just want to get this message up on screen and we worry about some of the details later. And of course, one thing to note is that I do have use emojis quite a bit as part of the messages. And so there's several ways you can bring up the emoji. One way is by using the function key on your Mac to bring up the emoji keyboard. On Windows, you probably have another similar approach to use as well. And so once you have your emoji, just paste it in here. So that way, when you see that on the screen, you can see the actual emoji appearing in, in lieu of an image you may have had to load because you know it's easier to not have to load an image when an emoji in the system will work, even though this emoji will probably look different based on the version of the operating system or the type of the operating system you're on, like a user on Linux or Windows, or even a mobile device may see a different version of this confetti balloon popping than you might normally see. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Next one, if entered number equals less than number to guess, here's the message we need to change here and similarly here. So the let message equals and I'm going to do a similar thing, P, your guess of entered number is, in this case it's going to be, is too low. Bolded to low, slash B, and I think it's gonna be an exclamation mark, and close P. All right, and that's, that's all we have in this particular line. And I'm gonna just copy my results from earlier, and just print that down. Let message equals that, and I'm printing the message for this perfect results that it's very email. And similarly for inter numbers greater than is too low, let me actually copy the message that's made right here and just replace the word low with high. And go ahead and similarly paste this results code here. Now, with all this copying and pasting going on, you might be like, you know, maybe I can make a function out of this, making it get simpler. Absolutely, knock yourself out. There's a lot of ways to optimize it beyond the approach I'm showing here. And of course, we have emojis here as well. So for the your low, I have an anchor emoji. And then for the your number's too high, I have a balloon emoji. And so if I were to go back to, let's say 15, like we had earlier and refresh this page, you'll see your guess of number 15 is too high. And let me make sure that what we have here, number's too high, the exclamation mark is actually not a part of the actual phrasing itself. And similarly, if I, the number I'm guessing, you know, is let's say nine, it'd be too low. And you can see your guess of nine is too low is appearing. So we went from having messages about where we are in our guesses to from our console to those messages now displaying in our page itself, which is pretty good progress overall. Now, the next thing you wanna do is like you specify these numbers via an input field, especially when it comes to what is the actual value we're trying to provide. Right now it's hard coded to enter a number and right now it has it nine, but we want it to be something slightly different. And so let's go ahead and specify our input field. So I'm going to do form, and inside this form, we're gonna have input placeholder, which has some default text here. It's gonna be enter a number. And then input mode is going to be equal to, let's see, it's in this case, it's going to be decimal. We want to be a numerical item. And ID equals number field. And then type equals number. So it's gonna be, a numeric field, which we already kind of specified input mode, but we want to specify it for more browser support as type equals number as well. And then similarly, when someone is about to enter the value, I want it to be uh, a button. So input type equals submit, which then makes it a submit button, value equals guess, and ID equals guess button. So nothing too, too dramatic here in terms of that. If I refresh the page, you'll now see enter a number and guess and so on. And of course we have a hard-coded value so this gets printed on screen. 
And so let me go ahead and just test this out. Let me type in 10 and hit enter and or 50 and hit enter. I notice that each time I hit enter, the page is actually refreshing. And you know, and the interesting thing is I'm not actually telling the page to refresh, I'm actually just putting in a number, the page is just refreshing. So let me put in like one, it's like refreshing again. And the reason for it is this. When you have an input, the default behavior, given the historical nature of HTML, is that when you submit a form, you navigate to a new page, that will display the results. In this case, we have a single page that's gonna be handling all of this, and we're using an input element to, to mimic taking some input and the hard coding the return key to submit the data. And that means we need to override some behavior. And I talk about this in another article in more detail, but the trick really is this you need to go into the form event handler and type in the on submit event. I'm actually putting JavaScript inline, you know, probably not the most cool thing to do, but in a world of React and Vue and all these other frameworks where HTML and JavaScript are now like pretty much mixed up, I think it's okay. I'm gonna do return false. What this means is that when uh, the enter key, you know, I press the guest button on the form, basically end the end the whole forms event propagation, the on submit event, to prevent a browser from refreshing the page. So if I now hit a number, you see that nothing happens. I, I keep hitting enter, I keep hitting guess, then the page doesn't change. So, which is you know, pretty much exactly the kind of behavior we want for the kind of app that we are building. And now let's go ahead and map all these UI elements to DOM elements so we can actually refer to it in our code. And so I'm gonna go ahead and type in let number field equals document dot query selector. And it's going to be hashtag number field. And similarly, I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to get the next value. It's gonna be guest button equals document and its value is gonna be guest button. You can notice that this matches the ID value of the elements that we're currently dealing with. And next, let's specify guest button, make it add an event handler to deal with the click. Click, and when you click it, we're gonna call the check number event or a function that we had earlier, which is pretty pretty convenient. And notice that you know our check number function doesn't have an event argument. It's okay, it doesn't need to have the event argument. We can if we need it, but we're not using any of it. So we're in a, we're in a good spot here. And so what we just need to do though, is make sure that the entered number isn't the value that we guessed from up top, it's the value that we guessed from taking the value from our input field. So you enter number equals number field dot value, and then number, enter number, oh, I forgot the equal sign, very important. And then number field dot value, you know, cleared out to basically empty it out to an empty string so that we don't have any values in it. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh this page. And let me clear out the check number call from right here. Notice that I had this earlier. So when our page loads by default, you'll have a value. I enter a number, say 10. And oh yeah, of course 10 is the right number. But let me put a value of let's say 15. You'll see your guess of 15 is too high. Let's guess a value of seven, it's too low. And if I type in nine again, look at the right number. And I type in 10, it gets correct. And notice that because I specified the input value is supposed to be both the number and input mode is decimal, I don't actually, I can't type in other characters as a part of my, as part of the input outside of only numbers. So even if I specify a letter key, nothing's gonna happen. If I'm checking on a mobile device like an iPhone, I'll get the numerical keyboard, on-screen keyboard to only have numbers in it as well. A nice convenience when it comes to making form input much nicer and easier. And so now we're getting to the point where we just have to do one minor thing in terms of our logic. Our number to guess right now is hard coded to 10 and we kind of don't want that. So let me declare number to guess, leave it uninitialized. And then just below where we have our event listener code, we're going to function set number to guess and set the value to number to guess equals get random number between zero and 100. And I'm gonna set the number to guess directly. Now, what I haven't done, of course, is specify what the get random number looks like. This is a very standard boilerplate function that I also have detailed and I'll put a link to it later on. But get random number 
it takes two arguments, low and high, and I just use math.random to make this all work. So let r equals math.random, or actually it's math.floor, times math.random, times high minus low, and it's gonna be minus plus, high minus low plus one, and let me make sure I get all the parentheses correctly. Yep, and plus low. Is this right? Let me double check my notes here. Math.random, that's correct, times high minus low minus one, bracket, bracket, plus low. Okay, something, you know, it's complaining about something. Let's see, what is it complaining about? The joys of coding live, of course, with, with all of you here. Math.floor. Ah, okay, I don't need this extra extra low there. All right, and so we have our get at random, set number to guess. Oh, and of course, you wanna make sure that once you guess the answer correctly, we set the number to guess to a new value as well. All right, let's go ahead and let me close the console for a moment there. Actually, let me write the console one more time. The console is great to show if there are any errors in the code so far. Let me enter a number, let's say 50. Number is, 50 is too low, all right. 70 is too low. 80 is too high. Okay, 75, 74, 77. Okay, now we're gonna close. 78, 79. Okay, 79 is correct, this is the new number. And so far, no errors in our console, so we kind of can be confident that the code we've added works reasonably okay, which is, you know, a, not the greatest of endorsements, but not the worst one either. All right, I'm gonna close the console for now. We're in a good spot. And so now what we're gonna do is actually style our game a bit. You know, our game is functional to a certain extent. It just doesn't look exactly the way we had it thought about earlier. So let's go ahead and just start building up the UI for this. I'm gonna go into set style, add my style tags, and let's start the top. You know, I'm gonna first make the, the page itself have a, a very unique look with the a monospace font, font family, monospace, and then background color. Let's give it the, the yellow color we saw as part of the examples. 74C. Now you can go with any color you want, of course, but I just chose to go with this one. And you can see now that there's a bright yellow page where the, any text might be in preferably a monospace font. And you can tell it is. It has a, a like a typical code editor like look to it. All right. So now let's go and add the, the main part of our display itself. And so what I want to highlight is the way our page was structured was that you had a lot of content centered. You had a region that was the logo. You had a region that was the actual input field with the input field and button. Then you had the results that weren't, weren't taking up all the space in the page, but they were scrolling within that region. So you saw maybe three or four results at first, and then you had to scroll to see the rest of them. And the way I structure all of that is by actually using a grid. So main display is grid, justify content, is center and justify items is center as well. And if I were to refresh the page, you can now see that some of our content is now displaying in the center of the screen, which is very convenient because before a world of grid, there's a lot more manual work that needed to be done. All right, now let's go ahead and add our heading text and all of that. So at head heading one, and they say font size equals 48 pixels. Margin is 20 pixels and text align is center. And so let's go ahead and specify what the heading should really look like. And so heading one is gonna be guess the number. So I'm adding some HTML while I'm at it. So let me refresh the page. You can now see guess the number showing up in, in big letters. And because I've zoomed in a bit, you can see it takes up a, an obnoxious amount of space. Don't worry, we'll fix all of that in a little bit. And the next one is, let's go ahead and specify the, the actual text itself, that main and the P tag. Font size for this will be 20 pixels, line height is 40 pixels, and we'll set the width of this to be, take up whatever space is available. Fill available. It's prefixed in WebKit, and you may not be by the time you watch the video, but right now it is, and it works across all the browsers I've tested so far against. And the, you know that's fine. The next one is results. So this is where we have the actual items themselves displaying. And so I'm at a max height, so it doesn't take up all the space, but 225 pixels. 
and overflow is auto so there'll be no scroll bar by default but when the content gets to the point where it does need to do more you will get the overflow capabilities showing up properly and then background color for this one will be slightly not quite white but maybe offset a bit with like a little bit of opacity so zero degrees zero percent one hundred percent essentially setting the hue saturation and lightness and 44 percent is the opacity and border radius is 10 pixels now for this particular color you know i just want to highlight that i did not write this all out manually i used the color picker just like i'm doing here to figure out what the value really needs to be so in this case i just changed it so it went to 255.44 you can do it this way as well let me just refresh the page to make sure things are looking good so far enter number 40 and you can now see that we have a, a background that is more appropriately styled to what we're trying to do 50 10 50 and you can just see that we can now scroll to this area as well so it's not taking up an infinite amount of height it, or maybe it is but what i'm saying is i've clamped down the height to a maximum size so anything beyond that will just scroll up and down which is very convenient on so many ways as well and so now we're just getting to the form element itself you know it has a slightly outdated look to it in some ways so display grid grid template columns I, I do want to kind of have it be a situation where the text input takes as space as needed and our button is only 120 pixels and uh, the width is going to be a hundred percent so if I refresh this page you'll now see enter a number and then the word guess appears and the last thing the form specifically is I want all the form elements that we have to have padding of 10 pixels because and a margin of 10 pixels as well we want to do to breathe a bit have some have some running room so font family is monospace font weight is bold i'm going to make this a going to make this a very noticeable stylistic appearance font size is 18 pixels border is three pixels solid and black and a border radius is going to be 10 pixels if I can spell radius correctly all right so if I refresh this page now you know see enter number guess number and the the right buttons have the right look and feel to them so 10 yeah everything is everything's fine I'm not gonna play the game again you're probably tired of seeing me play the game so the last thing is to just go ahead and style the button a bit guess button background color it's not going to be the default gray you know it has a nice retro look to it but no I want it to be b2 d e f f and then similarly when i hover over it i want it to, to look a little bit different so guess button hover and it's hover and it's going to be 88 c9 f a okay so if we refresh this page and hover over it yep this looks looks good so if i preview this page and refresh it things seem pretty decent guess the number button everything works so far the only thing that's kind of missing is that in our example we also had an image at the very top so let me add, go ahead and add that image of a donut actually. You can have it be any image you want. I must have been, actually I still am, always hungry for donuts. So it's a HTTPS slash slash group.com slash icon slash 1F369SVG. Now you can totally reference this image if you want to as part of building your app, but you may also want to go with your own image depending on what you prefer. And that's a that's a big donut. You know, it looks nice. The beauty of SVG is that it still looks all appropriate. So let's go ahead and size it appropriately. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our styles a bit. Dot main img and set the width to 100 pixels. You know, 100 pixels is, is not too bad. It's not obnoxiously large, not obnoxiously small. It's just the right size. And I can see guess the number and the button and everything is currently displayed there. And so now we have a, a working application. Guess the number, it works exactly the way we want it to and all the things are set right. Let me set it to its normal size and you can now see it at its native resolution. And so in terms of things to call out as part of the video, I call out some of the more interesting details there. The main big one is this one right here where if we didn't have this on submit return false on our form, the on submit, if it's a submit event would have propagated all the way through and once a browser, you know, the window or document heard about it, it would refresh the entire page. And this prevents it from going beyond just the boundaries of this particular 
container itself. So that means that when we press enter, the event handler for click gets called, check number gets called, but that's essentially it doesn't go beyond that. We have the default behavior this event has is prevented from going forward. So it's returned false. You might have even seen stop propagation as a name for an event that you might have used as well. The other part is, which we talked about, is what this happens with insert adjacent HTML. So as you can imagine, when I enter a number, say 10 is too low, 15 is too low, 50, 80, and so on. Each number I'm guessing happens to go at the top of this list of items, which is really nothing more than just you know, paragraph elements being inserted into our results paragraph elements. So the paragraph element instead of paragraph element. And nothing wrong with that. And just because of how inner HTML, which is the traditional method you might have seen before, each item would have been added after the fact towards the end of it, which means that we had to scroll all the way down to see the most recent guess. And I didn't want that. I wanted the, the topmost item to be a most recent guess. And the way you can tweak that is by very conveniently using the insert adjacent HTML method. So that's essentially the big one. And the other big one, everything cool here is a, is a big one, you know, in my world, is what we see when we enter a number, like I said, we only get numbers, we can't really enter text, and you only see, and you can see the on-screen keyboard optimized for numbers as well, thanks to input mode, which is the on-screen keyboard optimization, and type equals number, which is the, the form validation, which allows you to enter numbers very easily, and you can see, plus these arrow keys as well if you wanted to. And, Number negative one is probably too low. It shouldn't be supported, but but it is, and it's completely okay as well. So there you have it. A, a very quick, actually it wasn't very quick, but it was definitely a thorough look at how to build a guess number game. And we started from scratch, and we started with the logic. We wrote the JavaScript. We saw how to add the basic capabilities, and we progressively added more details all the way to the end when we created the UI, added the styling, and made all of this work. The idea really is for you to have fun, for you to build more projects like this and get familiar, get that muscle memory going where you have an idea to that you can now translate into HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you wire it all together and everything works just fine. And so with that, if you have a question, the best place to ask is on the forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others will be happy to help diagnose, debug, and walk through in great detail any question you might have regarding this or any web development problem. Subscribe to the Krupa newsletter where a few hundred thousand people just like you get a semi-weekly notification in your inbox of interesting web technology trends or something that I'm discussing that you might benefit from. So definitely sign up for it. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and all the other places where you get to see more bite-sized views of my thinking on various things I'm working on. So just a nice way to keep in touch with what I'm doing. Lastly, if you like the style of the videos, if you like to learn complicated topics on web development in a more visual way, I also write books and the books are in both paperback and digital forms. So pick which one you like, links for all of them at the bottom. And yeah, then that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and say I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.